Man the barricades, patrol the cover boundary At last the time has come, this is a cricketing emergency Hear this call to arms for every cricket revolutionary Take up your bats and stumps for the test match insurgency At first they tried to silence us, but we would not be silenced They threatened us with lies, so we threatened them with violence Che Guevara, Sangakara, Joseph Stalin, Douglas Jardy, Robespierre, Daryl Hare, Vladimir Lenin, O'Brien Kevin, Gary Lacriquet. T20 test, oh one day. India played at the Oval 50 years ago is when India won, when Ajit Wadekar and his side uh, beat India by four wickets. And last time India played at the Oval, Rishabh Pant and KL Rahul had centuries. And guess what? Virat Kohli never went past 50 in the last four innings he's played. And Root has two centuries in the two test matches he played. To talk about the fourth test and preview it, we got the gorillas back on track and courtesy to them, our jingle is what a player is, courtesy to them. Tony Bishop and Nakul Pandey, welcome back. Oh, thank you. Delighted to be back. Yeah, hi, Suman. Hi, Sanjay. Delighted to be back with you. Excellent day. So hopefully you guys are enjoying the much-deserved day off. I think you should thank England cricket team because they've wrapped the test in three and a half days. How do you feel? Surpri Surprise. Well... Simultaneously surprised and not because I was actually I was away during the first three days of the test match, obviously watching the highlights and so forth. So you think after a team gets bowled out for 78 and then halfway through day one, India piling on the run, England piling on the runs rather. And you think, well, hang on, how long is this going to last? And then day three, India did very well in very testing conditions to, in a sense, make it last as long as they did. And then they go into day four thinking, hang on a second, this is a really good test match. Potentially, all of a sudden, India in a very good position. But that new ball talked Anderson and particularly Ollie Robinson. Were, were bang on it. Every good ball or every somewhat average shot took the edge. Every every edge went to hand. Possibly what should have happened the day before happened on 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 day four. I think people will be reading a lot into the collapse, but you you give up that kind of deficit early on, or you your bowler for seventy eight, and then your bowlers don't fire immediately. Really, once you get a team get over two hundred, two hundred and fifty from that point, you're always you're anything anything you do from there is a bonus so uh simultaneously surprised and not they were two wickets down weren't they at the start of the fourth day were india all england fans who know only too well england's ability to grasp defeat from the jaws of victory could just see that scoreboard piling on runs to be honest it was a bit of a surprise that uh I mean, we should we should have more confidence in, in England, I suppose. But it was a surprise that uh, India fell over quite so quickly. Uh, Robinson, as Knuckles said, bowled quite magnificently. Uh, Anderson popped up with a wicket when he needed to, and it all just it all happened much quicker than we than than we thought, uh, which leaves us tantalisingly, teasingly, and magnificently poised for. Uh, the Oval and for Old Trafford. I mean, if you were to look at the social media back home, you wouldn't believe that this is still 1-1, everything to play for. And this is only England's first victory this summer after four test matches. So, uh, Nakul, your thoughts on how the reaction has been in India? Because you follow Twitter and everything very closely. Some of it is just bonkers, I think. But your thoughts? Yeah, well, it very I mean... rarely seems to be shades of grey. In I, India's I, approach, that's the thing. I, I don't think England. I don't think England's social media is too far removed from that. There's a certain core of, 
I think there are a certain number of cricket fans, whichever nation you follow, who just like to complain and almost are happier when yeah. things are going wrong because it gives them the chance to be, I told you so, and everything's terrible, and sack everybody, sack the batting coach, sack all of the players. But it, we, it, and, that, and that's been happening for England for a while. I mean, it, it's incredible. England were actually really good through 2020 and then played magnificently in that first test in Chennai. One test match and suddenly everything started falling apart. Uh, it, was, it was quite alarming, really. But with India, yeah, we put out a tweet on Gorilla Cricket, just a very quite banal thing, really, just saying, you know, a little bit of a highlights or something from the previous test and saying a little clip of Virat Kohli in the press conference and then saying, what would your changes be? And we've had drop Rishabh Pant, drop Chitesh Pujara, drop Ajinkya Rahane, let KL Rahul move into the middle order and keep, despite the fact he's never kept in a test match and has only just come back into the team after two years away drop any number of the bowlers you you, you want um you know have Jadeja batting above punt someone said during the test match bat Jadeja at three um which which is which is uh, I don't think even he with his faith in himself would 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 think that was the case uh, realistically I think actually we'll, we'll come on to the team selections I England are probably going to end up making more changes than India are going into this into this fourth test oh, match um yeah I mean uh, one of those so, would would be but would be uh, would, it will be enforced Definitely, yeah. Jo- so, yeah, Joss Butler. Butler's on paternity leave for his for the birth of his second child. Uh, India, are, n- not that much has changed. India played played badly and got caught in a perfect storm on that first morning in quite friendly conditions. Let's be honest. I mean, if India had scored two hundred and seventy five rather than or two hundred and seventy eight rather than seventy eight, I think this would have been a very competitive Test match because the pitch wasn't. This is the most batting friendly pitch we've seen all series. The oval, I think, might even beat that because the oval has been flat and quite slow for for a while. India would not expect, I think, the this one. This is not a typical English pitch in that sense that will come up. We will be seeing at the oval. So England and the, India will have to work harder for for their for their wickets than they have done maybe at some point in this series. We, you know, so that there's that one change and and but India really. You know, Ashwin looks very likely to play, and there's a leak that's been. Um, sent out to to the, the Indian equivalent of the Associated Press, the Press Trust of India, saying that Ashwin's going to play. Uh, look, uh, who knows how much to ever read into those things? But we know that Ashwin's been close to playing at certain points in this series. But but really, you know, one one two tests to to go. India have played very well through most of this series. I would be. I don't think that the Indian team management and, and captain are are thinking of this as, as panic stations in in any sense and I'm almost disappointed I have to I have to say that to be honest but just to just to assuage people teams can play badly sometimes even very good teams and and there was going to be James Anderson was going to happen at some point during the during this during this series he happened all at once with or with I wasn't aware there'd been a sort of a, a leak but um I mean if you look at the oval and the history of the oval not necessarily always favor a spinner but it tends to be flatter, known as a batsman's track. It can get, you know, warmer and dustier, even probably in September towards the fourth and fifth day. And you'd think Ashwin, if he was going to play anywhere, not to mention the fact, hasn't he already taken a seven for there in his last first class innings? So, you know, when he, he's supposed to be taking a bit of time off and, and being Ashwin, he decided that he'd want to go and play for Surrey, who, of course, being Surrey, immediately said, how much do you want? We'll double it, come and play. Uh, he, he's, got re- he's got recent form at the... Uh, Oh, well, I tell you who I would be really, really disappointed from an India perspective um, if he didn't play, and that's Pujara. Now, I think the key wicket that really, you know, started the rot was Pujara. Yes, it was an odd one. He, you know, he left one that he shouldn't, and it was it was a strange shot selection. But that ninety-one, you know, what was his highest before that? And uh, forty-five was it he'd made. 49 maybe I can't remember but he but it was the first time he'd really gone if he'd have stayed in a bit longer I think we might have seen a, a, a closer game and I just have a feeling the oval is much more likely to be the kind of ground that I genuinely think he will come good it's Pujara not, not, and he's not, a thorny old nut uh, to uh, remove <laughs> and it's a bit of a cliche but it's not just the runs it's the manner he, he looked so assured on day three his feet were moving well he was driving well he was getting that late cut going that he plays so well he looked very comfortable against Moin Ali uh, coming down the track and then cutting cutting late. And we he that was his fastest ever half century outside of Asia, the the of ninety one of ninety one balls. And he looked pretty much in control as as uh, which is and that testament to how well he played against there was that particularly that spell in the afternoon where Robinson was getting the ball to talk, getting the ball to jag off the seam in both directions. He came through that that challenging period, but he was 
he was very solid without being as cautious and as strokeless as he has been at times in this in this series. Um, he, you know, I think before this test match in that this hundredless run that he's uh, that he's been on, he's been scoring at over ten runs per hundred balls lower than his career average, uh, than his career mean rather. So he's been a very exaggerated version of himself, as players tend to do when they're slightly out of form. But he looked very much in command and like the player who's got 18 test match hundreds and until very recently averaged 50. I, I don't think that there is actually a serious question about dropping Pujada. I don't yeah. actually agree with the pundits who say that he this was a career-saving innings from, from him. It, it made things a little bit easier and it makes the... And it stops people talking about him for a while. But I don't think there was a serious question of dropping Pujada, certainly not once he started looking good. Uh, and in, in this innings, I think... Um, I think you know Rahane has been has been talked about as well as someone who hasn't scored many runs since that Boxing Day hundreds, but he looked he performed a very very important role in the second innings at Lords. I think in both innings, I mean the first innings really couldn't he wasn't in there long enough for anyone to work out whether he was looking good or not. But he looked pretty comfortable before he got out in the second innings. He was he was driving nicely, his feet were moving well. He didn't look as uh, as fidgety. Uh, I, I don't think the batting is going to be is going to be changed uh, at all, and uh, nor should it be. Virat Kohli said pretty categorically, as much as you can ever tell from post game, that the six batters plus punt uh, was, oh sorry, the five batters plus punt plus plus five bowlers was going to be the way he wanted to go, and I think that makes sense at the Oval, to be honest, because it is a flat pitch. It is one of those pitches that can get slower and lower and easier to bat on as it as it goes on, and unless it takes turn, it can be a very difficult place to get twenty wickets, and you need your uh, you need those extra bowlers and and particularly if Jadeja is available we you know we went to hospital yesterday we don't know exactly what that uh, what the outcome of that was uh, but he went on for uh, for a scan on his knee described as precautionary I mean I if I would expect the only change for India to be ushering in for whichever Seema looks most knackered really and which on the basis of that third test is Ishan Sharma you'd think wouldn't you he he was surprisingly it's his worst, it's his worst test for seven years in terms of the way yeah. he bowled um, not just the figures but he was struggling to find his run up. He was bowling both sides of the wicket. Uh, genuinely troubling for a guy who's been brilliant for the last five or six years. Probably, if I if I were to gamble, I think Rahane probably will be a chance. They might take on Pujara, no questions, they won't touch. They might look at combination of Rahane, but bowlers absolutely, as yes, Ishan Sharma will make way for Ashwin, for sure, or Shardul Thakur for that matter, because they might rest Jadeja saying knee injury. So there might be two changes coming along in the bowling lineup. But yeah, Nakul, you're spot on. It will be surprising to touch the batting order. But even if they are thinking of it, probably Rahane will be on the top of the list. You, so who are you then bringing in? Are you giving a test debut to Surya Kumar Yadav? Left field choice is Sky. Or they might give a chance to Mayank or Vihari. Or the other thing they could do is get Rahul in the middle order because they always wanted Rahul as a middle order batsman and give Prithi Shaw a go at the top who only had one failure effectively in Australia. So there's a lot of things you can do. And whatever the league PTI may have, uh, Kohli might come up with something completely different. Yeah, it, I mean, Surely yeah, there's the, the, a bit of it. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it though there, guys. I mean, K.L. Rahul, what would he... 84 at Trent Bridge, then 26. Uh, 129 at Lords. Okay, heading lean. Sure, not so great. You got to, you know, see that, things in the round, that, really, that, don't you? That opening partnership has worked. There's, there's absolutely yeah. worked for 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 India this uh, on this tour, and it was something that India have struggled with for years. They've only had, uh, including the one that they got at Trent Bridge, they've only had two century opening partnerships, India, in England in 41 years. You've got a guy back into the side looking as good as he's looked in test cricket for many, many years. And suddenly now you're going to move him out of that of that slot because, you know, Prithvi Shaw is a very good player. Mayan Kagarwal is a very good player, but you're going to take a uh, a punt on that and shuffle shuffle that around and move Rahul into position where, let's be honest, he's never batted in test cricket. You know, I know he's done it a lot in one-day cricket and I know he did it in the warm-up game. I completely, I completely agree with Tony. That's a fiddle too far. Uh, and I, I just don't think that's going to happen. Um, maybe Rahane for Vihari or, or Surya Kumar Yadav, but um, but I think that will be the outside. The, the leak just was Ashwin for Ishan Sharma, which seems quite likely. And 
I, I, I was saying before this test match, before the Headingley test match, that I would have brought in Ashwin, Ashwin for whichever Seema looked the most knackered. Um, I reckon nine cricket fans out of ten, if they had to make a guess at what you might do, <laughs> having seen the the evidence of Headingley, would have gone, oh, well, I reckon the oval coming up, it would be Ashwin for Sharma. I'm not sure in the quality of leaks, that's not the most informative no, thing you're ever going to see. No, and to be honest, I, and I'm not the only one, was saying this before the series started, that Ashwin, if India, you know, India decide to go in with one spinner, but you look at the old, the Oval and Old Trafford, and you think surely Ashwin and Jadeja, yeah. as a secondary benefit, he he length, he shortens that tail. But you know, you basically got you know, for all the people who say don't play two spinners in England, you're, like, you're not really. You're playing three seamers, a spinner, and Jadeja, who is a genuinely good six or seven, seven mm-hmm. number seven batter, and the fact that he is also a very very good bowler is almost a bonus. But your first question, when before we went off on a sort of a verbal walkabout was the was you know um, overreaction or not on social media if i'm indian and if i'm looking at india i'm going a winning draw at trent bridge did we win all the big moments yes we did a win obviously at lords did we win the big moments yes we did not only did we win the big moments we got right inside england's head <laughs> um and they you know they threw away the big moments because of that you know, we had a couple of we lost the big moments at Headingley. That doesn't equal a complete series turnaround. Um, you know, momentum. Yes, you can argue that to a certain extent, but you know, it, it doesn't seem to me a cause for overreaction. No, no, that I think England really... can still count themselves fortunate that it's level when you look back to Trent Bridge. Yeah, although that said, England would have gone into the last day at Lords expecting to be to be the side on the with the the winning position. So you never quite know, but it's certainly true that in India we're in a very good position going to that last rained out day at Trent Bridge. I mean, were you really expecting England to not play very well at some point in this series? Were you really yeah. expecting not to lose a Test match at some point in this series? No, uh, the the, the um, you know I understand fans get emotional and get angry and God knows that I've seen it enough from England fans on on Twitter and some people on this show uh, but but that happens that happens and that 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 kind of noise is just part of it and you've got to you've got to stick to stick to stick to your guns a little bit and I still think that this India team is a very very good team and it's probably better than this England team yeah and what about Jarvo 69 being banned oh God. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I was quite tired of him the first time he turned up, particularly when I then found out he's a social media self-described comedian uh, <laughs> doing it to boost his social media stuff. I look, he, I'm surprised he was let back in, to be honest, or let back into another ground. And it is not to take it too seriously, but Headingley ban him immediately. They've had the they've yeah. had the other Rafiq report for two weeks, <laughs> and it's still not out yet. And it was commissioned over a year ago. Um, you know, it's interesting what what clubs choose to act quickly on sometimes, and what they don't. Good point. Be interesting point. to see whether Sari's banned him or not. Uh, and and uh, just to the final point upon the overreaction, everyone's going back to 2014, similar trend, drawn test, win at Lords, and then it capitulated, and then the numbers thrown like 1986 is the only time India has won more than one test. So people are like worried. I think. This match has had more reaction than even the World Test Championship final. That's what I thought. But we still have everything to play for. So, let's start looking ahead to how England's combination looks like. A few forced changes as we already touched upon. Josh Butler going out for personal reasons. And you have Sam Billings replacing him. And Chris Wokes probably stayed back, comes into the 11, Nakui? I would think yeah. so. Oh, well, it'll be, it'll be Bearstow replacing... I mean, Ed, uh, you know, I'm not breaking any news here. Chris Silverwood said this in, when announcing the squad. Bairstow will keep. Billings is there as uh, as a backup in case something happens to Bairstow. Probably Ollie Pope's going to come back in, probably at five, with Bairstow moving down to six. You don't really want your keeper batting in the top five. Um, in general, it's just it's too much um, it's too much jeopardy there. And then, yeah, Chris Wokes and Mark Wood are both fit. And to be honest, I'd expect both to play. Um, I think Wokes in for Sam Curran seems very likely. Sam Curran hasn't performed in this series with bat or ball, hasn't made a significant contribution. And for all that Craig Overton bowled quite well at Headingley, although his wickets were tail end wickets, but still, we've got to take them. And uh, God knows that uh, England would have enjoyed some quick tail end wickets at Lords. Um, I, I think that 
you know, you don't really need the extra batting, so that's not that much of a consideration. It's handy, but Robinson is certainly good enough to bat at number nine, uh, probably number eight if you needed him, uh, if you needed him to. And you got, you know, you're a middle, a lower middle order of of Moen, Ali, Chris Works, and Ollie Robinson is pretty handy. Uh, and then I would I would expect Mark Wood to come back in as that point of difference on a pretty flat pitch. The top four, which they've kind of stumbled upon with Hamid and Milan, uh, the same. Then Pope, uh, Besto, Moen and Wokes in whichever order you like. Robbins and then and uh, and James Anderson. Maybe two definite, probably three changes. Is Jack Leach not in the squad? There is no chance of two spinners for England in a world. Uh, Jack Leach is not in the squad. I believe he's been released to play county. Cha- well, he got released ahead of the third test, and he's going to play okay. some county championship cricket. Got it. Right, which and at least there is some, so <laughs> it'll get the chance. I think. I mean, the important thing for England is, and they put so much store in it, is the form of Moen Ali. I know they've treated him appallingly, frankly, sometimes. But if he's anything like his old self, he offers you something with bat and ball. And he's can be your front line spinner, so that gives them freedom to make changes elsewhere. If Mo and Ali for some reason was not fit, then you know you do wonder if either Parkinson or Leach might get a go. But Mo and Ali showed enough at Headingley, I think, give England some comfort that you know they have him, then they have Root, and if they really need David Milan to throw in some licorice all sorts, um, mainly leg spin based. You know, they, they've got options when, when, when they need it, if, they, if the wicket's turning. Uh, uh, can get even, you for, don't well, yeah. Can get you. If the oval starts turning that much, <laughs> then, uh, the, then I think we're in for a, in for a very short test match. Um, but England clearly don't want a front line spinner in that, in that sense. Otherwise, Jack Leach would have been playing this, this whole summer. Mo and Ali, having said that, has now has more. I know he's played more Test matches, but has more Test wickets than Jim Laker. Um, he is a very decent Test match spinner. Um, he wasn't really needed, to be honest, at Headingley. But when he was, you know, getting that ball to turn sharply on a not particularly spin friendly pitch uh, uh, at Headingley to bowl, yes, Mohammed Shami, but it's still a very good delivery. It's Mohamed, coming out of Mohammed his... Shami, front line batsman at Lords. Well, well, he was quite, fantastic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I think Moen Ali wasn't going to be banging in the ball halfway down at him, uh, <laughs> but. But Mo, the ball's coming out of Moen's hand really nicely. Um, I think in the he took some wickets in that second test at Chennai, but he was a little bit erratic. The ball was lots of drag downs, lots of full tosses, but it's coming out very nicely. It looks very controlled. He's getting some revs. He's getting some uh, some dip and some drift, even when the ball isn't turning. And with the bat, he's very handy as a number eight, um, which is it's a stranger. He he plays a role for England in for England that is completely different to any other role that he's played in any other. In any of the first class, you know, in first class cricket, he's a number three batter who bowls a bit. It's completely the reverse for for England, but he he's done a very good job for England in the past, and he's not probably ever going to get back to that batting peak. But he's certainly very useful. Um, and uh, I'd say Chris Wokes coming back in is is an improvement with bat and ball over over Sam Curran, and probably would have played Headingley had he been fit. In fact, I think he would might have played the whole series had he been fit. I remember Chris Wokes's hundred. Uh... In Lords, the last time he was so uh, not only with the bat, I think he'll be a good addition to the England squad. Uh, yeah, I mean, more more recently, he and Joss Butler won the the Test match against Pakistan at Old Trafford with a magnificent partnership. Uh, he's he's at times Wokes has looked like a top six Test batter. I mean, he's got he's the one thing I would say about Chris uh, and you know I'm sure you know the Indian bowling unit will be looking at this in. Both the last two Ashes series, he's been vulnerable, very vulnerable to the short ball, particularly from Pat Cummins. And I wouldn't be surprised if that he starts getting a lot of short balls as soon as he comes to the crease. But he's a very, very useful um, number seven batter. So I, England could end up going into this. I don't think I don't know that Pope for Butler necessarily strengthens anything, but I think they actually could go in with a stronger bowling attack than they did than they had at Headingley with with Wokes and Wood, uh, assuming that's the way they go. Wokes for Curran is the obvious like for like. I think. Even though I genuinely think the ECB likes to play home players, you know we had three Yorkshiremen at Yorkshire. <laughs> um, well, Dowd Milan Yorkshireman, but you know what I mean. But uh, so I think they they, they they give those opportunities up lightly. Uh, I'm sorry, you know, reluctantly. But I do think Curran just hasn't quite delivered yet, and Wokes they want to give match time to. The thing against Wokes is having what did he do? 
trip over his own trousers or something. He, he did uh, something bizarre. He, he he slipped down the last three stairs in his house. <laughs> How or why that happened is is a mystery, but it's right up there with weird weird sporting injuries, isn't it? Um, but so it means he's he, he's massively out of match practice. I'm funnily enough, I know they want the extra change of gear that Mark Wood brings you, and you're just immediately discounting Overton. I've just got a feeling they might stick with the seam attack as it is, even though. Mark Wood is available. I think that's a more marginal call. Um, certainly, I it's it's purely conditions based. Um, I think Overton is a useful bowler, and to be honest, if Wokes hadn't been available, I think that him doing Curran's job essentially, or or him batting at eight and being that sort of fourth seamer might have been the way they would have gone. He's probably an upgrade on 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 Sam Curran with the ball at this stage as a test bowler uh, you know he can be an awkward customer you know he gets the ball to move off a length and he gets that awkward bounce but I think that he and Robinson are somewhat similar and I think on a on a pitch that is probably going to be flat unless it turns out very different to what we've seen it over the last few years I think that he could be a little bit unpenetrative and that India might want that point of difference in in Mark Wood and have Anderson Robinson and and Wokes doing the um, doing the longer spells. There's a nice balance to Anderson, Robinson, Wokes, Wood and Moen as a five-man attack. Yeah, you've got the change of gear in there. I don't, I'm not sure Jimmy would like to be hearing he's the workhorse for the long spells. I, you know, At the age well, of 160 or whatever he is, you know, I think... <laughs> I think he's short, sharp bursts of, of brilliance. I think he's the direction he'd prefer to go in. Though that said, he, he was magnificent when he needed to be. Saying, coincidentally, Shane Wong called Sam Curran bits and pieces cricketer. What about that? Sanjay Manjrekar like Jareja, Shane Wong to Sam Curran. <laughs> It might be a little yeah. bit more justification in uh, in what, what Warren has said. Although I did also see that Warren wanted Liam Livingston in this test squad, which is not the most ridiculous shout, but wasn't never going to happen. A little bit surprised. I'm just trying to think if I don't think Sam Curran's ever played for a T20 side that Shane Warne coached. So let's see what that. Let's see if that changes. If that uh, if Sam Curran ends up as a Rajasthan Royal next year or something. Yeah, um, big option coming up. So definitely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, Sam, Sam Curran's a good. Uh, you know, I think people have gone a bit overboard with the criticism of him, but I, he just hasn't given England enough with bat or ball in this series yet. To keep out the player of the proven ability in class of yeah. Chris Wokes, fourth, fourth seamer and number eight is is a tricky role. <laughs> you have to find a way to do something spectacular to justify it. What was it? The thirteenth king pair at Lords. We worked out was that's never gonna that's not gonna help your your confidence. Although to be fair, he he he, he, he came back a bit it's, at, it's, at Headingley. It's been it's been cameos and it's been little chip ins here and there. I mean, Chris Wokes could easily open the bowling for you if you wanted him to. Uh, and could easily bat seven and provide you genuine runs from from number seven. Um, I don't know that he's quite as good with the bat as Jadeja, but it's pretty close between those two. Previous against India, of course, as well at uh, at Lords, mm -hmm. though not the Oval. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now we cannot not talk about the man who's kept England in the hunt for entire series ah. for a period of two years. Everyone was wondering where he's going to get his next 100 from, just like Virat Kohli is wondering. But Joe Root, what great form he is in. Let's talk about his batsmanship as well as how he's carried the England team with so many key players missing, looking ahead to the Ashes, etc. Starting with you, Nikhil. Uh, it is the ridiculous statistics keep on coming. Um, yeah, that conversion rate. I mean, it's still, you know, one fifth. 750 plus scores, six of which have been hundreds, two of which have been double hundreds. Uh, he's now six times this year scored the highest uh, individual score in the match on both sides, which is a record, and it's only August. Yeah. Uh, and there were, I mean, the, the gap between him and the next best in the England team is is, is staggering. Uh, it really is. The, uh, there's a long thread that Andy Zaltzman uh, test match specials scorer did on Twitter, which is well worth having a look at, putting it in historical terms in terms of the percentages of um of a team's runs that he's scored in a calendar year. And the Lord's the the sorry, the Headingley hundred was certainly his least pressure his least pressured of the uh, of the one so far, but possibly the one that he was in most control. And perhaps those two 
go together, but you know, with Ishan Sharma off color and Siraj taking a little while to get into it. Uh, but he, his his footwork is 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 incredible. There were some highlights or some some statistics shown on the TV of maybe India bowling a little bit too short at him, but part of that is because he's so good on the back foot. He's so good at turning those back of a length deliveries, getting up on his toes and punching it away through backward a point or through cover. Uh, he plays so late. He's got incredible placement. You know, he's up on his toes and 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 f- turning perfectly decent deliveries into four into four scoring opportunities. And then and then and then they they pitch up to him, uh, and then he's able to flick you away or to or to drive you. He's not driving down the ground, which I think is. People say play straight, play straight, but I think in England with the ball moving, actually, that's not a good idea. You 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 don't want to be playing around the ground too much. You you Joe Root has set the has has shown what what to do. He's using those those spaces uh, behind Square or just in front of Square, and he's made India. You know, Virat Kohli's been trying to put fielders in all sorts of different positions in that in that arc from from deep third round to cover. And with, wherever he goes, Joe Root finds the gap. And it, it, it's his ability to score off good deliveries. It reminds me, it reminds me very much of Stephen Smith uh, at, at, his, at his peak. Hmm. Uh, it just how it seems almost impossible to stop him scoring uh, at, at this point. And he's, it, I was there on the, on, to watch him at Trent Bridge uh, when he scored the, the first 100 of the, of the series. And it was an absolute delight to, to watch him to watch him play he he looks um visibly a different class from frankly everyone else in this series and there are some very good batters on on both sides you you see how how hard Virat Kohli is having to work at the moment to get decent scores in the in the series you know he looked pretty good for his 55 uh he looked okay for his 40 odd uh earlier in the early in the series but that that's a guy who's really having to struggle for form and having to almost fight bits of his technique for Joe Root. Everything is just clicked. And, you know, the work he did over lockdown, which we, which we heard about in between the third and fourth test, where he looks at all of his dismissals from the analyst, he's just internalized all of that. And th- this is the sort of patch where even someone as good as Joe Root may not have again. And it just shows you how the, the difference between a player really fighting for themselves on the one part and the one, who's finding things very, very easy on the, on the other. And the only battle really is how much support can he get and how, how much can he maximize this moment? It's been absolutely joyous to watch Root in 2021. Yeah. I mean, when he came to the crease at Headingley, I think he was three quarters of the way to the wicket <laughs> before he actually went into a walk. He'd skipped, trotted, danced his way. I mean, he looked like a man who just wanted to go about his work. <laughs> massively um and he's got some record you know what the only other english players to score six in a calendar year i think were michael vaughan and dennis compton he's got well with two test lists left of this series let's say there's three ashes tests because that's up in the air you know he's got the likes of mohammed youssef and viv richards into the most most runs in a calendar year in his sights the way he's racking them up at the moment so i mean it's just just you know, record after record for him. Um, and as Nacho says, it, it, all good things must end. He, <laughs> but he probably feels it won't at the moment because it's just his confidence is so high, he's so light on his feet, he's seeing the ball magnificently. And um, he, yes, it, it, you know, if you take him and Anderson out the England side, then how good would England be? But if you take, you know, one or two Indian players out, you, you could argue the same. So uh, it is, it is a Anus Magnificus for him. Mirabilis, is that it? Not Magnificus. Anus Mirabilis, that's what a phrase I was looking for. And I'm sure he'll want to keep it going. Excellent. Um, Just don't oh, ask ooh. me any more Latin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And listen, is he going to keep going till 45, 50? I don't know. He seems to get younger and younger, really fired up. Uh, and he probably was the one who made the difference. At the start. Well, not if Knuckles captain, because he'd be, you know, wants to turn him into the workhorse that's just plugging away for well, over after I mean, over. But... I was saying that relative to Mark Wood, which is uh, who really you shouldn't ever be rolling for more than four overs in one in one go. I mean, Anderson bowled, I think, seven or eight overs on that first on that first morning, just because he was taking so many wickets. It seemed like a like a shame not to. I mean, there's this curious thing with Anderson that it seems like a blip. Uh, 
But it's been going on for, depending on how you slice it, either 14 or 22 test matches of not taking very many wickets in the second innings, which has been going on for a long time, actually. I think in his before the start of day five, I haven't updated the stats, or day four, rather, he'd taken his wickets in the last 22 tests, so going back to the start of the Sri Lanka tour in 2018. He'd been taking his first innings wickets at 18 and his second innings wickets at 48, which is a bizarre gap to be going on for that long. And I haven't, you know, maybe, um, you know, George DeBell, I think, posited this in his Crick Info article. You know, maybe he's not getting the support he he should have with, you know, with um, Broad missing a few games and Archer missing games and, 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 and so forth. Or maybe he's getting, a, he's showing his age a little bit, but. Having watched him in the series, I haven't noticed a particular difference in how he's bowling or how the ball's coming out in the second innings compared to the to the first. He still looks just as grooved as he has been for the last several years. I remember people after the thirteen fourteen Ashes, people were wondering if that was the end of James Anderson. And if you take just his career since then, any bowler in the world in history would be proud of uh, of that. I, I don't think it's fruitful going, wondering how long he's going to go on to. You know, we'll wake up one morning and James Anderson won't be a test cricketer anymore and it'll, the world will be a slightly sadder place. But I don't know when that's going to come. And I'm not sure he does. And that's a good thing. Root captaincy, uh, I mean, in Lord's test, he did come across as a slightly defensive captain. I'm going to get into trouble saying this, but he did come across as a defensive captain in Lord's. Did he have to do much in Leeds or is it? Was it his tactics getting the new ball on fourth day? What What are the thoughts on Root's captaincy? Well, he he did very well to lose the toss. That was a good start. <laughs> I've been, <laughs> been trying for a while. <laughs> he's been trying for a while, and now it, it's finally it finally worked for him. I thought after the Lord's Test, he immediately fronted up to the errors that he'd made as as captain, and you know admitted he got suckered into the into the fist fight where, you know, England didn't need to. Um, and it, it was interesting as well how the team very quickly defended him after that and said, well, hang on, no, it's not just you, captain. But, but he did. He did the captain's job there and he and he took that on the, twi- on the chin. It's, it's an interesting question. Did he have to do much at Headingley? Um, <laughs> well, after, you know, the what was it, 78? Was it 78? The, the, yeah. Arguably, perhaps not, um, but he led from the front, and England's big total was built around him. So, uh, and for once, he actually got the chance to come in with some runs on the board rather than digging them out of an enormous hole that the openers had sort of left for him to try and scramble out of. Um, so, I, you know, I, I've heard the argument before of, you know, our captain's good because if they've got a great team you know you tend to win anyway I think the captain should take the, the credit for a team that wins and uh, he should take some things on the uh, the chin when they lose uh, I, he certainly did nothing wrong at Headingley and I don't recall any yeah. moments where I thought what's he doing or I, I don't recall moments where I thought that field's a bit too defensive possibly the first probably the beginning of India's second innings when they were racking up runs and there were only the two wickets after the Bairstow catch. I think that was the time when we thought, right, here it is. You know, the tails are up now. And, and it didn't quite happen. And and I think he managed the process. I thought he managed the issue around the new ball exceedingly well. You know, you could see he was right under Kohli's skin at the end of the day when um, he took the new ball, whereas Virat was going, was chuntering and angrily, moaning away because he wanted to stay out there well you know the rules are the rules Virat so you could see who's who was under whose skin by yeah. that stage and if ever there was a decision to you know rile the likes of Virat the Kohli even if he didn't mean it that way that was that was the one we'll take the new ball now we'll walk off mm-hmm. and tomorrow yeah. it's going to be a brand new ball to to attack to attack you with um that in itself was a sort of both a psychological and a captaincy master master stroke, I think. Yeah, I, I I do wonder how many other captains, unless you had two really good spinners, I wonder how many other captains would have done otherwise. That just seemed the most obvious logical thing to do, rather than bowling. Root well, and except Moe you could that argue point. that the, those two weren't going to be pushing that hard in the gathering gloom, um, and therefore the opportunity potentially to keep bowling with the old ball and maybe winkle one out and you know 
best case even yeah. two. I, I think it was the right and he move. Chose I don't not know, to do that. I think it was the right move. I don't know that it was a master stroke or anything that was completely out of the box, but it was the it was the correct thing to do and from and the the most the move with the highest chance of success. So absolutely give him credit for that. I think he's been a decent captain over his over his time. Um, he certainly seems to have the respect of his of his team. Um, he's I think he sort of slightly joked about this after the last test. So I don't know if this is actually true or not, but I would have to look at the figures. But he's you know persuaded Anderson and brought the ball a little bit fuller. Um, I don't know if that's again. I don't have the data in front of me, and I would love to see it, which is a difficult, not an easy conversation to have with bowlers of that of that caliber and that experience, even though it's been four years. And he's had decent attacks to work with, but some very some a series of very flaky batting lineups in very tricky batting conditions, and he's had to deal with his own form fluctuating, hmm. uh, as well, well as being the captain during COVID, which is which kind of been easy for anybody. COVID uh, rest and rotation. Which injuries to all your key players. I mean, I mean, yeah. he's he's had a fair bit chucked at him. Uh, some of it, like you know, the ECB shooting itself in the in both feet. Um, and he's watched, you know, I mean, Morgan, you know, whatever where Morgan wants, he gets. Uh, I'm not sure. Whereas I, I that, think the struggles have been a bit not not been the case for Joe Root. And he's, I'm not he's sure that I don't think that's quite true. That. If you look at some of the T20 sides that England have put out in the last few years, but uh, I mean, COVID. I mean, the rest of the rotation was mostly COVID anyway. It was mostly to stop players being in the bubble for four months in 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 one go, um, rather than rather than anything else. I mean, he's had to deal with that as every international mm-hmm. captain has, has had. I'm not. I'm not saying that to you know in any way uh, detract from the. The frankly appalling management of that last fine, that final morning at Lords, where he is the captain and he fronts up, but the whole team had this collective brain fade. It was like you're ganging up on our dad Jimmy, and we want to we want to give it back. And I'm sure Jimmy Anderson at some point was thinking, "Well, guys, what are you doing?" In fact, I think he, he even said that he even said he thought, "Guys, what are you doing? Uh, just 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 bowl normally. We, I we, I don't need you to to stick up for me in this ridiculous manner." Um, but you know, it's always nice when a team, when your opening bowler takes three wickets in his first eight overs and you bowl a team up for 78 and you get yourself on a flat pitch and they're one of their most experienced seamer uh, in Nishan Sharma bowls that bowls poorly. But he he managed the situation very well. I thought he did well not to get carried away and too antsy on that, on that final, uh, sorry, in the end of day three. Um, you know, for all that, I don't think he particularly bowled too defensively. I think Ollie Robinson could easily have had three wickets on that in that spell, uh, and India could have been bowled mm. out that night uh, on a, on another day. Viewers, captaincy success is just variation and fluctuation and 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 luck, frankly, or, or things that aren't necessarily in in someone's control. But at the risk of hiding behind a great, I'm going to do this anyway. Richie Benno once said about about cricket captaincy. That it's ninety percent luck and ten percent skill, but don't try it without the ten percent. Um, yes. I think we do well to remember that sometimes. Absolutely, yeah. and I, I, Michael Vaughan. Sure. Michael Vaughan was saying on Craig Buzz that he still has one more big step to uh, call himself as the greatest captain of England. Uh, Joe Root, that is winning an Ashes urn. So I think that's one last step left for Joe Root. Uh, it's a fair reflection of the. Uh, of the overwhelming priority that the Ashes takes in the mind of the the uh, of kind of popular England cricket fandom, possibly the the Ashes myopia uh, in 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 some ways, and the fact that it might take it too big a role. Yeah, you know, Michael Vaughan won an Ashes series, and so is remembered as a great captain. Um, uh, Mike Brearley has re- won Ash- won the 1981 Ashes series and remembered as a great captain. Douglas Jardine wins Bodyline and is remembered as a great captain. A, mo- a lot of people, unless you go digging, not that many people know anything about the captaincy of those three other than that in in England. Yeah. So he's yeah. he's not wrong in 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 the sense of um, uh, Ray. Don't what? forget Ray Illingworth. Then if we're going to chuck people into the sure. Ashes winners, um, don't forget our Raymond. He deserves sure. to be in that company. Sure, and, and was it Gower in the in eighty seven? The, the Ashes, for better or worse, is what most England fans care about most. Um, and what a lot of English cricket writers care about most. Who knows if this Ashes series is going to go ahead or in what guise it's going to go ahead. It's the most logistically complex Ashes series of all time uh, with the um, with the various quarantines in different states and them changing all the time and uh, all sorts of political pressure not to allow, excuse me, sports people to get special exemptions when Australian citizens can't and the families and all this. I really, I don't know any more than you do, and I think anyone who does say that they know at this stage is 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 fooling themselves. 
Uh, if it does go ahead, I think this Australia team are there for the taking. Well, magnificent. I mean, great insights as usual. We always love talking to the gorillas. Uh, when we dissected the previous test match and also previewed the next test match and captaincy insights, brilliant. Thank you, Nakul and Tony Bishop. Really, really appreciate it. And Sanjay for making time on a Sunday evening. And hopefully you guys enjoy the bank holiday weekend coming up. I shall be going to watch Middlesex tomorrow, so I'm actually going to go and see some county cricket. Hooray, finally. The, re- <laughs> the, the return of Toby Rowland-Jones. Uh, hopefully, yeah. I don't know if he's in the squad. Yeah, uh, and I am um, editing my final university project, so uh, fun and games all around. You got plans to watch the uh, Oval Test? Nakul, I know you went for the Lord's Test match final day, didn't you? I was at, I was at Trent Bridge, the the final day of actual cricket, as it turned out at Trenbridge, and the final day at Lords. I'm not currently going to the Oval Test, but I'm commentating three days of it for Gorilla Cricket. And I had well, I had tickets for two days. I've managed to offload the first day because I will be commentating for Gorilla Cricket. Uh, but I'm going on the Saturday. I've got so the day three, so that'll be interesting. I've got the fifth day tickets, uh, so fingers crossed it goes to the fifth day. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, we <laughs> That's a shame we're not there on the same day, but there we go. It did last time. It did in 2018. Yeah. It went to day five, very uh, famously uh, too. Uh, yeah. I say probably the flattest, probably the flattest pitch in England, test wise. So I think your chances are good. And the weather, from what we know, is dry. It's one of the close test match, and the series leads into the final game. That's what we want for the test cricket. Thanks again. Really, really appreciate it. For folks who are watching in, drop us a comment and tell us what else you would like to watch or hear or listen. Otherwise, enjoy the next test match and see this is nicely poised, one each. See you later. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Take care, all. Cheers.